All right, guys. Well, moving on from that, we're going to talk a little bit about how the proposed college football super league impacts college basketball's future. Um, so there has been a strong per push for a new governing body to seize control of college football, gain control over name, image, and likeness payments, the transfer portal, and wipe the NCAA clean of future lawsuits aimed at the business of the sport. As reported by The Athletic, a group called College Sports Tomorrow, consisting of college presidents, college football executives, and personnel from the NFL have outlined a system that would replace the current conference structure and college football playoff while also bringing in the idea of regulation. The plan outlined 70 programs from all Power 5 conferences plus Notre Dame and SMU that would split into seven te 10 team divisions. An eighth division of teams would be prompted for the second tier compromising 50 plus division one team that aren't in a power conference like the Mountain West Conference. Those 50-plus non-power programs would have a chance to compete their way into upper division while the seven, seven, 70, excuse me, sorry, 70 permanent teams wouldn't be in danger of regulation. It's a similar structure to the European Soccer League. The idea of one entity overseeing college athletics athletics biggest revenue generator appears to have an answer for just about every problem surrounding the sport but what does it mean for the future of college basketball um, college sports tomorrow has stated its proposed idea would create the finances needed for non-revenue generated sports to survive and thrive that loosely includes golf tennis rowing soccer volleyball and baseball college basketball drives a significant amount of revenue even if it's less than football though the proposed Super League wouldn't translate to the hardwood. For starters, there are over 360 Division I college basketball programs compared to 130 plus FBS teams. The conference format works in basketball because of how the NCAA tournament is structured to grant automatic bids for conference championships. A form of regulation and promotion in college basketball could work in the theory though a carbon copy of college football's Super League format would risk altering what many consider to be the best postseason in U.S. sports. So, in a world where separate entities control basketball and football, how do leagues and schools that don't sponsor Division I football survive? namely Gonzaga, the Big East, mid-major schools, and conferences that are built on success of men and women's basketball. So, Okay. Um, this article really got my wheels turning, mm -hmm. uh, because there's a lot of executives or, I mean, people are coming out mainly from the SEC and the Big Ten that's like, Super League is dead. It is before it ever even starts. It's not happening. Mm -hmm. And then, but there are a lot of private, uh, companies that want it to happen. Mm -hmm. Meaning there's a lot of companies that are willing to throw a lot of money out at, to make the Super League happen. Uh, there are some schools and some chancellors that want it to happen. Mm -hmm. The problem is that I see with this whole thing is the Big Ten and the, and the SEC has too much, have, they have a lot of power and they're not willing to give up that power. Right. Uh, and so I started thinking about this and and how to do it. And I'll give you my solution on how I think I would would solve this issue, because I just it's the proposal of 70 teams. And and seven different conferences. And then there's an there's an eighth conference, which is from the group of five where there's mm -hmm. the top 10 teams get into their own conference and there's relegation and all of that. It can work and a lot of people want it to work, but it has to be altered because the SEC is not gonna be like, okay, you know what? What's best for college football? We're going to give in and we're gonna go away. The Big Ten's gonna be like, yeah, we got a hundred and something years history. We make a massive amount of money, but yeah, we're willing to go away and do away with conferences all together to do this program. 
it's not realistic mm -hmm. whatsoever. Not to mention when you start thinking about college basketball and what the solution is for college basketball with all the different conferences and everything and the way it works makes it incredibly hard to do. Mm -hmm. And so the solution is an alternative. I, I For football, I thought it was easy because of the fact that you could say, here you go, the Big Ten gets two automatic bids, the Big Ten East, Big Ten West. Just divide them up into East and West. That's two schools. The, a, the, the SEC East, the SEC West, which is already there, that's they get automatic bids. I give the Big Ten, I mean, the ACC champion, they get a bid. The Big 12 champion gets a bid. And the new Pac-12 team gets a bid. And then uh, the group of five, the best team from the group of five gets a bid. You could do this program exactly the way it's set up, but you have to keep the conferences. Mm -hmm. Now, this proposal talks about how how you're able to do, do this. It fits for football, but no one's thought about what about basketball? There's way, there's double the teams in basketball. Same concept applies. It would just have to be different. Mm -hmm. you, you, you wouldn't necessarily, you would not do the relegation program part of it. But you would still have March Madness and have still have all the conferences still run it, run it in. Um, and you could still have March Madness and it doesn't change anything. But um, it still it makes it so that, you know, you can still keep the greatest tournament of them all, which is March Madness, especially with the fact that they are taking March Madness and talking about expanding it. Mm -hmm. So if you're expanding March Madness, already from 64 to 70 to 80 teams and more it already fits into this new program and so therefore it works it works incredibly well um i hope it i hope it happens because it takes care of all the issues that is plaguing college football yes this makes it so that there's one organization that handles name, image, and likeness, transfer portal, playoffs, everyone. There's none of these committees deciding on who wins the national championship. All of this has been decided. Mm -hmm. So I say it's a good thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. All right. Excellent. So. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Well, with that, we are going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about Clay Thompson um, and how he will be prioritizing mental health in impending free agency and how Magic is emerging as a top suitor for Clay Thompson. So make sure you guys stick around and we'll be back in a minute. 